<laughs> Hello! Uh, this is a video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make a very simple, basic bookmarklet. And this is really a warm up. My goal here in the next video, and the video after that, and the video after that, is to start looking at Chrome extensions. Chrome extensions are a much more powerful way to affect the browsing experience as a whole and actually the interface elements and uh, all sorts of stuff in the Chrome browser. But a bookmarklet is a really quick an easy way to add a button that's like a bookmark that triggers some code that changes your browsing experience. So let's look at how that works. So before I get to that, I'm going to live in ES5, which is, uh, and not use some of the fancier newer JavaScript syntax just to sort of demonstrate the simplicity of the idea. But I, um, I'm, I'm sure that it will get people watching who will help suggest fancier ways to write the same code, and I look forward to including that in the material, supplemental materials that will be linked from this video's description. So, if you've ever made a function in JavaScript, you might have done this. Function, you know, hello, curly bracket, curly, no, parentheses, parentheses, curly bracket, curly bracket. If I want to execute this function, I want to run that function, I would just say hello with the parentheses, that means execute this function. So now, you are probably aware, I'm looking for my eraser, here it is. You are probably aware that in JavaScript, functions can be anonymous, meaning they don't have to have a name, and it can just look like this. But then, how do you execute the function? So typically, you might write an anonymous function because you're passing it in somewhere as a callback, and somewhere else it's going to get a reference to it and call it somewhere. But in the case of a bookmarklet, what a bookmarklet actually is, it's a JavaScript function that when you press the button, it runs. And so a funny thing that you could do, if this is the entire, right? remember if this was named hello, then I could execute the function with the name and these two parentheses. But I can actually just execute the function by putting the two parentheses there. So this is like an anonymous self-executing function. Again, I think that's right. I don't, I don't, there's some probably appropriate technical term for it. So this is actually, so what a bookmarklet actually is, and if I just put something like console.log or alert, maybe alert will be a good, I, I like never, I, I have this like mission in life to never ever use a JavaScript alert and I'm gonna, somehow I'm gonna do that, <laughs> but I'm gonna break that mission, that's it, right now. So I can say alert, you know, hello. So if this were the code for my bookmarklet, whenever the user presses the button or goes to that quote unquote bookmark, um, this code is going to execute. So this begs the question, this is a very simple idea, and, and now it's up to you, like, well, what do you put in here? You can read, you, this is where you can start parsing and looking at what's on the web page and changing it in real time with JavaScript, but uh, the question is, where does this code go? So now let's look at that. All right, so you might be aware that if you go, so if you go to a URL, and this you don't really see, that Chrome, by the way, is hiding the fact that this is HTTP colon slash slash. So I could go to a URL by saying HTTP, that's, I'm saying I want to make a hypertext transfer protocol get request to this URL. But I can also, in the browser, look at things that are um, like files on the computer. So I can open up index.html and you can see, oh look, now I'm going to the file colon slash slash, um, but I can actually, there is, and there's actually like a data path where I can do you know, base64 encoded images. There's all sorts of different kinds of paths that the address bar will accept. One of them happens to be JavaScript. I, let's, dare I try to do this? Function, oh, I am remembering something that I'm also being told in the chat. I made a little mistake here which is that in order for you to execute this function the way that I've described here, you actually have to also enclose the entire nameless or anonymous function in parentheses itself. So otherwise, it's, it's unclear, I guess, to the interpreter like what this actually matches up with. So this is execute the function that's inside these parentheses. I'm pretty sure that's required. Um, so. Now let's come back here, and so the reason why I thought of that is because now I'm going to actually just type that code in right here in the address bar. Function, this is going to be really hard. Function, curly bracket, um, alert, hello, semicolon, close curly bracket, close parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. 
So this is me saying I want to go to this URL. It's JavaScript colon slash slash. Actually, I don't think you need to slash slash if I'm thinking about this. I think it's just JavaScript colon and then this code, which is a self-executing anonymous function. So I'm going to zoom back out here and I'm going to now hit enter as if I'm loading this web page ah, and I get this alert. The page says hello. So this, that's actually what a bookmarklet is. Now I wish I had copy pasted that because now all I need to do is I can say, I can have a paragraph and I can say, uh, I can say, hey, this is a, and I can say a href equals bookmarklet. All right, so look, take a look at this. Now we can see this here. Now if I click on this, nothing happens. So what can go in a a, what can be the href to an a tag? It could be a URL. It could be, it could be, <laughs> it could be lots of things. One of the things it can be is actual JavaScript code. So for example, that same thing that I typed, JavaScript colon function, uh, oh, I need to put a parentheses around the function, function, parentheses, uh, curly bracket, uh, uh, <laughs> alert, hello, close, quote, close, parentheses, close, curly bracket, close parentheses, execute. So now let's try refreshing this page and now whenever I click on that, it runs that JavaScript code. Now guess what? If I wanted to bookmark a URL, all the whole thing, like if I, like here I have a bookmark up here to the Rainbow Topics GitHub repository. If I click edit, all this is is a name for this particular URL. A bookmarklet is just a named set of JavaScript code. So I can now say, um, I can now, right, if actually what I could, I could I create it, but I can actually just drag this up here. And you can see, look at that. Now I have this here and every time you, I click on it, I get that alert. Click, alert, <laughs> click, alert. And if I go edit, we can see this is just this. Now it's URL encoded. It did that for me because a quote is not a valid, um, a valid character in a URL. So the, um, this has been URL encoded, meaning percent %27. You often see like percent %20. That means space, percent 27 apparently means single quote, I think. So you can see, you can write it this way. Now, so in a way we're done, yay, we made a bookmarklet, but we haven't really done anything yet. Like, here's the thing, is this really sustainable? Is this the thing like, oh my, oh my goodness, am I, how am I gonna, what if I wanna do something really elaborate? I wanna crawl, I wanna look at all the content on that web page, and I wanna find all the paragraph elements, and I wanna look anytime the word, um, puppy is in there, I want to change the word puppy to kitten. So it's a, it's a bookmarklet that changes puppies to kittens, or swap images out, or change the background color of every web page to a random color. All these things are possible, but working with kind of trying to write the code in here is going to be so incredibly awkward. Like how am I going to really develop, because I can't really have line breaks or spaces very easily here. So there is a strategy that is used quite often. So the next step that I want to show you is how could I write all of my bookmarklet code in a separate JavaScript file and then simply point to it from here. So in other words, what I want to say is new file. Um, I'm just going to call it bookmarklet.js. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to write the bookmarklet in a way that's much like easier for me to follow and debug. Um, so for example, something that I might do is uh, I might say, you know, console log bookmarklet starting. And then I might say, um, and I, now I don't have access to, there is a way to gain access to JavaScript libraries. Like I could have jQuery or P5 be a part of what I'm doing, but I'm gonna just do stuff with native JavaScript. So I could say, for example, you know, let uh, P paragraphs equal, equal document dot get uh, elements by tag name uh, P, and then I could say four, um, the, uh, let i equal zero, i is less than paragraphs dot length, 
I plus plus, and I could say paragraphs index I dot inner HTML equals, so this is me like kind of doing a little version of the deletionist or wordless web. Like let me find all the paragraphs on the page and just set their inner HTML to nothing. Or I could say set their inner HTML to kitten. So this now, if I wanted to, I could put all of this into that JavaScript URL and I could like remove all the, the um, I could remove all the white space and probably make it work. But what I could do that's a little bit easier is, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just, Type this out on this in this text document for a second. Um, uh, down here is I could actually say, all right. So this is kind of the right. I could write that this anonymous function, and then what I can do is one of the things you can do in JavaScript is add elements to the web page. And so the element that I want to add is a script. So I'm going to say let script equal document dot uh, create element script. And then what I want to do is, oh, I want to add the, change the source. Script dot source equal to um, bookmarklet dot js. So I want the source to point to this other JavaScript file. And then I want to say document dot body dot append child uh, script. So in other words, this is kind of some boilerplate code that can basically say any, uh, I, this just uh, point to a different JavaScript file that's going to have all this other stuff in it, tons and tons of code, and then just load that and execute that code whenever the bookmarklet is, um, is triggered. So this is actually what I want. Did I get this right? Uh, hopefully I got this right. This is what I want to go in here. Um, and this is going to be a little tricky to make happen. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this here, is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this all on one line. There might be a way for it to account for line breaks and stuff. Um, so I'm going to take this now and I'm going to put it in here. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> is this really going to work? Uh, I, I didn't close the paragraph tag. So let's see what happens here. So I am now going to refresh this page. Uh, I'm going to delete this one up here. I don't know if you can see that. I am going to, uh, I'm just going to like um, click this. Okay, error 404, file not found. So I think there's a, okay, so there's a little bit of an issue here which is that, and I'm going to get to this, it, you actually need to host your JavaScript file somewhere. And I have one that I already made and hosted somewhere. Let's see if I can get the one that I, so this, this won't really work in a sustainable way. But what I can do, I wonder if it doesn't like the white space either. But I think more likely, right, what I need to do is just say this. Because what I want to do, let's just make sure this is the right URL for that JavaScript code. It is. There's that JavaScript code of that URL. So that, that should allow it to point to the actual URL where that JavaScript code is hosted. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is click this. <laughs> Oops. I made a really silly error. I completely forgot that I need to have this say JavaScript at the beginning. Just miscellaneous JavaScript code in that uh, URL is not going to do any good. So this has to say JavaScript. Sorry about that. All right, so let's try it now. I'm going to click on this bookmarklet. Oop, and it made a kitten, and we see the console log. Perfect. So what I can do is I can now drag this up to here. I could go to like my tutorial page. I'm now on my tutorial page. I'm going to scroll to the middle somewhere where there's a bunch of paragraphs. I'm going to click the bookmarklet, and all the paragraphs now say kitten. Yes. So this is the basic idea of making a bookmarklet. What you need to do, and it's obviously oh, a little trickier than I thought. And you can see, actually, I, have, I should just copy pasted the code for my tutorial. But here it is right here. I can just, I, I basically, all I need to do is have this uh, boilerplate code that points to a JavaScript program that's hosted somewhere. And then what it does is uh, that JavaScript program does something, parses the web page, changes some stuff. Anything is possible there. Now, there's a couple things I want to mention about this. 
Browsers, browsers love, 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 love to cache your stuff. So if I, ch I don't know if we're gonna, if this is gonna happen, but let's see if we can make this happen. If I change this now to say a puppy, right, and I go back to and refresh this page and click the bookmarklet, it does say puppy, so it, it worked. But I've definitely been in the situation where I changed the code and the bookmarklet didn't actually uh, update when, it, when, I, when I executed it. So a way that you can get around this, um, I actually have it here in this tutorial, so I'll just come is, is to add a kind of arbitrary uh, URL argument, which is like um, uh, the current date and time, which will force, it'll make the URL appear different to the page that's loading the JavaScript code and it will force it to reload. So I'm gonna leave that out of adding that in, but you can, you, uh, um, when I publish the code for this example, I'll include that as part of the code. Um, now, what I've shown you so far, it doesn't really do you any good. Um, what I, well, at least what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, this is actually a um, piece of JavaScript code that's basically the same thing, that just takes all the paragraphs and changes their background color to some purple. So the way that you really want to do this is you want to host your JavaScript code somewhere permanent and then what you want is for the bookmarklet to um, reference, not like referencing local host is no good, it's going to work on my computer, but you want to reference a URL that's actually out there somewhere in the cloud. The nice thing about this is as people use your bookmarklet, I mean, there's a, there is a sort of security question here. You can change your bookmarklet's code and they don't have to reinstall it because the, the actual code that they have in the bookmark is just pointing to another JavaScript file and that JavaScript file can be updated. Okay, so maybe I'll come back and do a coding challenge. Or, but, but, so send me your creative uh, bookmarklets that change images to kittens or puppies or rainbows or unicorns or whatever. Um, and all sorts of, I'm sort of more creative ideas than what I can think of right now. But I'm gonna now move into Chrome extensions. We can do, I'm gonna start by making a Chrome extension that does exactly the same thing, but with this kind of code that alters your view of a web page in a Chrome extension, there's going to be a lot more possibilities of what you can do beyond that, okay? So thanks for watching this bookmarklet tutorial and uh, I'll see you in the next one.